Hey, happy Wednesday, and it's time for our training number three. It's the third day of our seven day challenge, Own Your Thoughts Challenge. And in day one, we sort of went over just sort of the outline of the, th of the seven day challenge. And also we talked a little bit about just beginning to pay attention to any spiraling thoughts that we had, any conversations we tend to have in our head over and over again. Um, just becoming aware of maybe a belief that is not really supportive of who we want to be. That was day one. And then day two, we talked about how do we interrupt? How do we stop those spiraling thoughts, those conversations? What can we do to interrupt them? Um, and then some specific tools to use to interrupt and then thoughts to go to. We have a little um, a toolbox ready of uh, thoughts and things that we can do to try to shift us out of whatever it is that that place that we're at where those spiraling thoughts are, where those conversations are, um, going outside, meditating, thinking gratitude, um, a variety of different ones. And so today we go on to the question of why did I do that? <laughs> Why did, and, and this is a question that we often ask in a variety of different ways. It could be, why did we do that relationship? Why did we do, um, you know, say that, you know, why did we do that action? You know, why did I do that? Especially when we, you know, I, I've done this, <laughs> I'm going along and, and I've said, I get this thought and I'm like, I'm not going to say that. And then all of a sudden it just sort of bleh, comes out my mouth. Why did I do that? <laughs> so we're going to get into this question today and tomorrow. Um, today, it's really kind of understanding what beliefs are and how they affect us. So what uh, our beliefs come from things that happen to us, often from our childhood. And yes, often in relationship to our parents. Not that our parents are bad people or that, and, or that we're bad people or anybody's bad people. As we get older, we begin to realize our parents did what they did because that was the, what they had in their own toolbox at that time. They are usually doing the best that they can with what they have from what they learned from their childhood. So it's not that we're judging anybody when we go through um, understanding this, it's just to understand because what we feel is real. What we experience from our, our journey, from our, what we've gone through is real. What you feel is real. If you wake up in the morning and you're feeling sad or angry, that's real, but we don't have to stay there. And that's the key. We can understand it. And when we acknowledge that, you know, without the judgment of this is a good feeling or this is a bad feeling, but that you are just feeling something and then to go through that search of why am I feeling this? What is it that has happened to me recently that has brought this out? And then often what is it connected to further back? And how can I understand that? And maybe journal about it, write about it, and then shift that. Okay, so what did I learn from this? What was it that this experience taught me? And how can I use this as I move forward to where I want to go? So. For me, when it comes to beliefs, so let me let me let me backtrack just a second to our beliefs. Then, as you can see, have an emotional attachment to them, right? Our beliefs um, that we have about ourselves that often create that spiraling thought or those conversations from wherever they started from have an emotional attachment, and then that those beliefs and that emotion start to tell us what actions we should be taking. And then those actions end up having results. And then those results then go back and feed into our beliefs and then our emotions and then the actions we take and then the outcomes and it's this circle that keeps happening. So what we can do to, to sort of shift that circle or cycle is to first understand where those beliefs come from. and how these emotions that we are feeling are attached to those beliefs. And then that allows us to start to change 
those two things, the belief and the emotion, so that we take different action and have different outcomes, and then that will support different beliefs and emotions. So for me, when it comes to this idea of domestic violence, of being in an abusive relationship, it comes back, there's a lot of it. This is just one, there, but there are, it's, it's a complex thing, and I'm not gonna say it's only just one thing. But the one thing I wanna focus on that really got me into my spiraling thoughts was that people who love you cause pain. <laughs> and people who love you, you know, may show it in a physical way of pain. And this goes back to my dad. And my dad grew up himself through corporal punishment, which is spankings. Um, I even went to a Catholic school for a period of time and they had a paddle in the office where they would whack the kids, right? <laughs> One of my earliest things was being in first grade in a Catholic school and when we could, did something wrong, this, 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 this nun would come around and take the back end of the pencil and there's no eraser on these pencils and, and, and go like this on, on the top of your head with it, right? You know, <laughs> so, but the real experience was that, you know, my dad, would uh, when my my brothers and my older sister would do something wrong, he would take his belt off and he would whip them. They would go into the room, he'd shut the door, and you know they would uh, bend over the bed and he would whip them. And I remember specifically one time I was in there with them, um, and because I have no idea what it was that they did, and he looked at me and he said, unless you want to whip in two, you better get out of here. So I did leave at that time. So that was sort of my first experience, but what I really feel, you know, sort of pulled this together and created this, this belief in me and this emotional attachment was when I, when I was probably about 12, 11, 12 years old. And back then I loved roller skating. We had the old roller skates that were like four wheels that were one, two, two in the front, two in the back, and they were metal wheels. <laughs> and there's my rooster, he hears me talking. And um, uh, my dad, we had this spot on the linoleum floor in the kitchen that where the tile just kept coming up, coming up. So he was trying to fix it. He was putting some kind of goop on there and it had to start, it had to kind of set a little bit before he could put the, the, the tile on it. So he said, do not wear your skates in the house, you know? And so, but me, it was so much easier to put them on in my bed, uh, sitting on the edge of my bed than doing it outside. And so I, I put them on and then I was like, oh, I remember just I was about to go across the floor, right? Here's this floor, right? And it's, it's from me and then there's the, the door outside and it's only like maybe 10 feet and it, it's just this one spot that has the goop on it. And I'm like, I can get past this. He won't know, right? He's downstairs somewhere. And so I start to kind of tiptoe across with my skates on and of course it slips and it goes right through the goop. And so I was like, oh, you know, I'm an honest person, so I take my roller skates off, I go downstairs, and I tell my dad what I did. And here's this little 11-year-old girl, you know, doing her best to be honest and truthful for what she did, going to her daddy and telling him what she did. Well, he got angry, and of course, I understand where he was coming from, his own frustration in having this, this piece kept coming up and up and up. He was, he'd been doing everything he could to try and get this thing to fix. But he heard me say this and his frustration just came out from everything that he had been experiencing as a dad with his work, everything. And he proceeded to chase me from his room down the hall, up the stairs, across the kitchen, into our room and got me and then spanked me very hard and long. And that grounded into me that the people who love you are going to hurt you. Uh, and often physically. So over time, you know, you know, fast forward to later in my life, not that I actively searched for people who were going to be abusive towards me, but I became accepting of it in my relationship. And this became a belief and the emotion attached to that belief. And so when I would, so that is one reason you know, why did I do that? Well, this is part of that, right? Again, it's a complex thing. It's not just one thing, but this allowed me to be accepting of the pain, of the abuse, of the anger, of the violence in the household towards me, towards my objects. You know, by the time I was out of my abusive marriage, I had no nice things left, right? All my little trinkets, everything were broken. So, you know, but I was accepting of it. And, but it also, <laughs> I began to not 
understand that identity of who I was, right? And, and so the why did I do that actually began to be a shift for me. Um, you know, especially after, as I mentioned yesterday, I had a moment of, of, of um, uh, where, I, where I became suicidal and, I, and, and the one thing that kept me was the importance of me to my children. That was one thing I could hold on to was that, you know, where everything else was lost about who I was because of everything that I was going through, not just with the abusive relationship at that time, but also working towards my PhD and just having all the professors there just be negative and mean. And I had gone through my prelims and I, and just, just one thing after another of trying to beat me down and tell me that I was a bad person or I was wrong or I wasn't good enough. And I, and so the one thing I could hold on to is that the, I knew my children loved me and I could not do that to them. So then it was this slow thing of, okay, why am I here? How, why am I in this? I, I, I feel like I'm trapped. I can't get out. How can I do this? How can I get out? And then it began this slow journey of recreating who I was until my environment started changing around me. But I slowly started to change those beliefs. And believe me, it took years, years and years, and especially after I got out of there, to really start to shift that idea that, that, um, you know, that people who love you are going to hurt you. And even when I got into my next relationship, um, that, that belief was still there at a very lower, much lower level, but in that I was allowing myself to put other people before myself that I wasn't as important as other people were. And that became the real shift in the last few years is really shifting and realizing that I am important. I have to come first. I have to fill myself up first in order for me to be able to love other people from the overflow. And then that is truly honoring who I am. And that became the, the learning that I got from those experiences. I changed my belief about all go went back to to the core of it with my dad became understanding understanding how this this one part of this complex un, you know identity of who i was was created and then changing that over time writing about it um, understanding it and taking the learning from that and recreating the belief into something that served me and made me realize okay now that i understand this about myself I can share that experience with other people. And therefore the emotion that was attached to it shifted and it became something of that I learned that I could do and, and, and one, forgive other people and forgive myself and then take that learning and use it to in a non you know, from that non-judgment way of just realizing we all are on these journeys of doing the best we can and then taking it as a, as a, that learning that I went through so that I would have this tool and knowledge and understanding so that I can share it with other people. And that became so powerful instead as something that enhanced who I was rather than taking away from who I was. It created a bigger Jocelyn rather than a smaller Jocelyn. And that then changed the emotions around it to one of love and understanding and non-judgment that and 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 forgiveness that could then be bring different behaviors, right? Different actions that I take instead, like loving actions towards myself first every time. I come first, you know, then will come my partner and my children, but I come first, which is a huge shift for me. And then that will produce different actions. Then that produces different outcomes <laughs> that have come back to create, reinforce and support the change in beliefs and the emotions attached to it. And I'm not saying this is an easy process, but this is why did I do that? Right? This is an understanding of that question. And instead of it being a negative, oh my God, why did I do that? Why am I such a bad person for doing that? Why did I do that from that negative place? It becomes a much more positive, why did I do that learning? Why did I do that? Because I wanted to learn something. Why did I do that? Because I needed to grow. Why did I do that? Because that is something and experience that sometime in the future, I can connect to somebody else who's going through it and help them and support them so that they can not have as much of a struggle that I did 
or that I can at least be there with them and they know that somebody else has experienced the same thing too, right? So it's it we change the understanding our belief about that experience that it changes the emotions that are around it and when we start that process the spiraling thoughts that that stem from that begin to go away we can shift those mental conversations in our heads to where we want to go rather than being t pulled by the fear pulled by the anger pulled by the resentment um, whether it's towards other people or towards ourselves and we can change that to being one of love and understanding and learning and acceptance and saying you know what I'm not a bad person for that that was just something a part that was part of my journey to go through and that's how we can I mean we, we did learn how to 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 um, you know create a pattern interrupt and we did learn how to change it to something else but when we go through understanding the why of what that did and changing the why changing the belief it then will stop us over time in moving toward moving back to those spiraling thoughts those conversations in our heads so that is my quick hit on why did we do that and then tomorrow i'm going to go a little bit deeper into this so that we can start to understand even more about how to shift out of it so I hope you enjoyed this and remember you're amazing and beautiful and wonderful. We can feel our feelings that we feel are real. Our emotions are real. What we experienced is real, but we can change what it means inside of us so that we are not stuck or we're not being pulled down into emotions and feelings that we don't that don't help us move forward, right? Being angry all the time and sad all the time and emotional in, in that we're lashing out at people, that, that, that's a learning that we're going through, but we don't have to stay there. And, and when we shift those beliefs and, and we shift how we understand it inside ourselves, that empowers us to create the world that we want instead of being you know, part of somebody else's story. I hope you enjoyed this and we're going to get go even further again you are amazing and wonderful just the way you are you are absolutely perfect for who you are we are all learning we are all on this journey we are all moving forward and so just take each day and and do the best you that is you and celebrate life and soar free